Hey guys, how's it going? This is Jorge from the Big Band Podcast. I'm here with my co-host Adrian, and today is um, today's an interesting conversation. We are going to discuss if we really want our virtual assistants to be human. <laughs> um, now, the there's an in, there's interesting things going on in the world of voice recognition and AI currently. As of this morning. I don't know if you know this. There's the creators of Siri, the the you know the the assistant from Apple. Yes, of course. Um, so what so what happened was they sold Siri to Apple, and then they you know went off and did something else. And basically, what they created is this thing called Biv, which is the next version of Siri. Biv. Biv, like Vivian. Oh, okay. Um, and they just showed it off or did a demo this morning, um, showing off her capability. Basically, it's frictionless AI. <laughs> what frictionless? What's that? You basically, the the thing understands what you're saying and then goes goes ahead and does it. So it goes beyond the task the task um, intent of something like Siri, so it's, where it's like question answer and then it tells yeah. you an answer. Yeah. This, I mean, if you tell it, hey, listen, I, I'm I'm flying to um, I don't know, I'm flying to Colorado tomorrow. Find me a uh, a, a ticket less for less than a hundred bucks and uh, you know time of day. And all that stuff, you give it everything, and the thing goes and does it for you, without you having to input like your credit card, anything. It does it for you, everything. <laughs> That's kind of like their most, uh, you know, high level and tactful example that they have. So that's basically what it is. Oh, and it talks too. <laughs> um, so it's like a companion. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's weird, but it's 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 really awesome <laughs> because it goes beyond. Um, you know, kind of like the question answer that Siri does, yeah, because you, or the or the anticipation that um, Google Now does uh, when it you know it shows you information and whatnot. It doesn't talk to you, but it shows you information in your devices. It goes beyond the Alexa, which is more like a it doesn't speak to you um, unless you speak to it. Um, it goes beyond you know any other Cortana, which is also like an assistant. It goes beyond any of that. This thing's like, like, really, really capable now. Um, of course, it's not as smart as we like Jarvis from, <laughs> from Iron Man. <laughs> hey, you were selling it like that. Well, it sounds like it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but I, I think that you know, Jarvis, Jarvis for all these, all these companies is, I think, the end game. Um, <laughs> that's the end game. Uh, but we're we're still ways before that even happens. But you know, at this point, right now. We're at the point where we do a lot of these, a lot of stuff with these with these things, with these assistants, and um, I think our expectations are that these things should 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 you know you know regarding the marketing from from the companies is that these things are almost like us, uh, but that's we're we're not nowhere near that, um, but um, I think I digress from from the topic a little bit, but I have to mention the Biv example because it just it just happened this morning. Um, so who knows what's gonna happen? I mean, we ha we had planned this episode since last week. We did not know about the the Biv <laughs> the Biv demo. <laughs> um, <laughs> I know about Biv before, but I didn't I didn't know they were gonna do a demo. But um, I think that changes a little bit of the topic. But uh, the point the point being is that do we do we really want to do we really want to talk to something that sounds like us? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's like the logical step. It's like. Do we want something to sound robotic? No. <laughs> uh, I think it's gonna, there's going to be a voice pack. Robotic it has voice to, there pack has to be one. There, there's going to be people who are going to be for At least for as, the, as a gimmicky example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> for gimmicks purposes. <laughs> um, I think that's, that's going to happen. <laughs> because right now it's mostly just the voice of a, of a woman. <laughs> um, but... Um, <laughs> You know, it's 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 really it's really weird because um, I don't have an Alexa, but I have I have a Siri and I have the the Google Now thing in Cortana. What, what's the Alexa? Alexa is from from Apple, from from uh, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, Amazon, the Echo, the, the Echo device, the one that's like a speaker that sits in, in around you in your living room, somewhere in your home. You just position it and then you talk to it. And you say, hey, hey, hey Alexa, um, you know. Send me an Uber, whatever, and the freaking thing does it. <laughs> or 
you know, uh, ask me for some sort of some eggs and some 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 milk and uh, and you know Amazon delivers it, uh. <laughs> you know stuff like that. But it's all basically, um, you know, like that. You know, it's kind of like task based stuff. Oh, and Alexa will tell jokes to you and stuff like that. So it almost has you know it also has that gimmicky side. But for the most part, it's you know it's just like that. I mean, just you're not talking to it because the thing starts talking to you. You talk to it when you want to talk to it. And that's the end and game, that's, right? And that's where it is. But the end game is like Jarvis. <coughs> the thing talks to you, you know, as if it were somebody else, and <laughs> you respond to it, and, you know, all this stuff that goes on. <laughs> but we're nowhere near that. I think it's more like all of these guys are, you know, playing different roles and how that's going to play out. But uh, the Biv the Biv thing is, I think, is going to push it forward uh, simply because it's it eliminates a lot of, a lot of the other ones, <laughs> um, that's it's it's really really incredible. Um, personally, do I want to be talking to something other than something that sounds like a robot? Yes, um, I think it's weird to talk to something that you know you un you you get that it, you get that it understands you, but you know that not everything's going to be understood, um, and then you have to kind of clarify to it that you know this is what I want. <laughs> But it's going to be learning, right? It's going to ask you, hey, what's that mean? Or, or I don't understand. Yeah, I don't understand, blah, I blah, blah. I can't comply. Yeah, something like that. But um, I, I, think, I, think, I think it's weird also for, for other people in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the sense that, you know, and you know this, there's a lot of people still don't, need, don't use technology. Um, the simple fact that you put a computer in front of them is like, oh, my God, I want to mess it up. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now imagine if you bring this thing to them and say, you know, just talk to it. <laughs> I mean, talk to the freaking thing. How are people going to feel about that? Like, like what's going to happen? I mean, I don't. I mean, I've never. I mean, I never looked this up on YouTube, but now I think it's a good example to look up people who've never used Siri for the people who've used Siri for the first time. Mm -hmm. Like people who'd never owned a smartphone before, and this is the, fir the first smartphone they get, and it has Siri on it. Like they got to talk to it. What the fuck? What's their reaction to it? Like. Like what the f, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, I mean it's 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 weird. It's weird. Yeah. You saw that video that I sent you? A little bit. It's like thirteen minutes long. Yeah. But um, it talks about all these things, um, in aggregate. You know, all these companies with their different um, virtual assistants, and um, you know, it's weird. It's really weird still to the point where, um, <laughs> it's not, it's not completely there. Where we're, we should should want it, but you can see that pe some people you know are kind of like a give and take <laughs> mm -hmm. with the whole thing. Um, but um, I don't know I think I think there's 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 bound there's things or there are bound to happen when these things get better with the language part. <laughs> I mean it's it's a topic that is discussed in a lot of uh, futuristic either movies or anime I mean it, it's I think for people like us or at least like me if I can talk to someone like a human I would definitely stop interacting with people I mean, I'm, I'm going to be talking all day long to it, just have the company, and it's going to learn from what I like and all that stuff. And I don't, I don't know if it's going to make my searching for things easier online. That's a big plus. For example, if I'm like, um, I'm having, if it tells me, I sense you are stressed. Yeah, because I don't know how to do this effect. What effect? And I... Tell, tell it looks it, it up for it, you. and looks it looks it up and finds Something. exactly. I mean, it 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 doesn't make me uh, look it up on Google and like weed through everything until I find exactly what my problem is. <laughs> I mean that that would be amazing and it'd be even better if it was like, well, hopefully <clears throat> this will make you less stressed and pops out the the, the solution. What well, I mean, you're talking about Jarvis. <laughs> <clears throat> Yeah, because Jarvis, Jarvis works or used to work hand in hand with, with Tony Stark. 
I mean, it, and Tony Stark would tell Jarvis something, and Jarvis would, you know, even even act like, um, like like emotional. <laughs> uh-huh. um, <laughs> so it's it's like it's really it's weird. I mean, it's weird um, because it's like it becomes it, it becomes your friend and understands you and yeah. all these things. Um, what I would like to happen, and and I think that's that's also what Jarvis does, is it augment it uh, augments you. Like it, it, like the the. I think the perfect end game for these things is um, a scenario where they they impede us from being stupid, <laughs> um, more stupid than we really are. <laughs> if you know how to use it. If if the thing, yeah, I think that's I think that's a better end game than just oh here's an assistant to help you, you know, do less stuff. I mean that's the perfect pitch for most people because it makes you, makes you lazy. <laughs> but I think the the perfect scenario is when. When you know the thing starts questioning even our own motives, <laughs> yeah. and it, it makes us and it makes us smarter <laughs> on purpose. <clears throat> know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I think that's I think that's the end the, the the perfect thing, but I don't think that's I don't, I think it's up to us. I mean I think I think it's up to us if we can program these things ourselves, <clears throat> but I don't think if we just let Google and all these fuckers, you know, decide how these things are gonna work. <laughs> I think I think we're in we're in for a big fucking surprise, <laughs> um, and I don't think that's gonna happen. <laughs> but um, I think the I mean even the the movie called Her you haven't seen it, uh, haven't but seen it's it. it's basically it's Jarvis on steroids, or not on steroids, but with a with a a woman's a woman's um, voice, with emotions and trying to be human and all this stuff. So it's like. It's like poking, very curious. <laughs> it's a curious yeah. version of a virtual assistant, and um, <laughs> it's different because. I mean, it's still assisting. Yeah, that's when you get into the into the whole thing of will we fall in love with robots? Will we fall in love with our assistants? All this crap. I think most people will. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're just the, get a, a just perfect the, version of something. Yeah, just like that example of the and this is not voice, um, but uh, this Siochi. Bot that lives in WeChat. Um, it's created created by Microsoft. It's a living, breathing uh, bot that acts like a person, a woman, you know, chatting with people in China. And people in China are telling it everything, like even their most, you know, hidden desires and whatnot, secrets and all this stuff. <laughs> you know, I think it's because it, they can't be judgmental. <laughs> yeah. You know what? That's where it starts. And imagine having an assistant that's not judgmental. You're gonna tell it everything, everything, like everything. And she will understand. And nothing's gonna say anything. <laughs> but um, and I think that's the first phase. Unfortunately, that's 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 where it's heading, because nobody wants to be judged, <laughs> and that's how people become attached to something because not judging you, is giving you leeway to do whatever the fuck you want, is never questioning you, but. It's like your perfect friend. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. Quote unquote. <laughs> but um, <laughs> so I think that's the reason why uh, we want something that's you know, you know, at the end of the day, we want technology to be humanized. And I think most of these companies, and, and not and even the companies that are coming up um, in the future, are going to aim to humanize technology, and that's yeah. just the bottom line. <laughs> Yeah. What that looks like, well, we don't know. We kind of have like these um, alternate visions from sci-fi movies of what they could look like. And I think we have like the Her, the Jarvis, um, what what else? Hal, I don't know if Hal is one example. <laughs> you know, Hal 9000? It, 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 yeah, it, it's an example. <laughs> I mean, there's there's bound to be more. But <laughs> but um, I think that's just the bottom line where we're headed. Yeah, I, I was actually watching an, an anime that uh, what's it called? Ergo proxy, and basically, basically everyone has a companion <coughs> or an assistant, and it's a robot. It's a robot, but it, it it detects your stress, it detects everything. And and the example I was telling you is that uh, let uh, a couple adopts uh, <coughs> a robot, a mini robot kid, like eight years old, and it's programmed to act like an eight-year-old girl, but when the 
well, the government lets them adopt a baby, the problem is like, okay, so, well, what are we going to do with this kid? So they, they call the one of the repair guys for the robots and they tell her tell him, you know what, it's, it's acting funny. Take it back. We don't want another one. And if you do give us another one, we want a nanny because we're going to have a kid. So that's when I told you that humans suck balls because, I mean, the, the, every, and, uh, everything that the woman said was in front of the android. So... I mean, for me, it was like very sad. Like, you know what? Yeah, I don't need it. It's a machine. Take it. And then the those that couple gets brutally killed, but not by her. But um, like it 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 it's a world where it's full with uh, assistants, robot AI assistants, yeah. and they they practically make your life. A million times easier because they remember everything or they do everything and and one of the the, the main characters is a, like a police officer kind of detective thing and uh she's like i'm gonna go investigate you call for backup and wait stuff like that so she doesn't need to call for backup and, or or the robot is just like scanning everything and telling her oh, you know what you missed this you missed that blah blah blah, blah. or or he can run fingerprints while she's still i mean there's a lot of things that can work that way with that. And I find that very, very, very interesting if it's used like that because maybe somebody else is going to use it for something stupid and it's going to make us lazier or, or way more stupid or I don't know. It, it all depends on the people who get their hands on it and how they use it. But it, it has the potential to be something amazing. I think, I think it has... The potential to be one of the most offensive things that's gonna happen. Period. Yeah. Um, uh, and I and I think that you know the and and the unfortunate thing is as we've talked of about before you know the pros and cons of creation is that we you, we tend to look look at the utopia, but the but the unfortunate consequences. <laughs> We rarely put, you know, things in play for it not to not to, to happen. And um, when 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 I hear that there's, you know, four or five companies that are controlling most of this stuff, the future of AI, you know, it's like what the f, <laughs> you know, it's fun to look at and to listen and to to be informed about it and to to play with it. But you know, <laughs> it's 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 weird. It's weird. It's weird to imagine that, you know, these companies are deciding the role of these things in our lives. And um, I, I look, look. Uh, the simple fact of the matter is that most people are addicted to their smartphones already. You know, that's just step one. <laughs> that's step one. <laughs> yep. Um, and and just I think it was two or three days ago that some some app company created an app that can have Alexa installed on your smartphone. <laughs> so that's like a big boom because before it was just here's here's the echo the echo device it lives somewhere in your house or a bunch of them live in your house and that's it. Right? That's it. It's not in smartphone, it's not nowhere else. It's just in the fucking in the fucking speaker. Now these guys create an app that if you install your phone, you can talk to Alexa to by your phone. <laughs> it's going everywhere with you. Um, I don't know if that's Amazon's end game or what's going on, but um, that just tells you, like the the degree of you know the degree of 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 speed that this thing is moving with, and how fast we're gonna be living in that time, where you know. We're gonna be responsible for humanizing technology. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now my other question comes in is, what's what the hell's gonna to happen to our pets? <laughs> because our pets, dogs, cats, or whatever, um, kind of act like our friends, <laughs> not our assistants, but our friends, mm -hmm. our furry friends. What the hell is gonna to happen to them <laughs> if we become? You know, addicted to our 
assistance and whatnot. And then being able to talk to them, not being able to judge us. Because that's another thing our, our pets don't do. They don't judge us. They just sit near us and cuddle up to us and do all this stuff. <laughs> right? That's all they do. That's why we like them. <laughs> they listen. Yeah. They don't understand. They understand they what the shit we're saying. But, <laughs> but sometimes they feel for us and whatnot because you can tell. But that's it. They don't judge us. They just, they're just there. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I think it's, it, we're way, 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 way off before we could... Um, replace pets because i mean one of the things at least for me is um petting my cats i mean like each one has different uh, kinds of uh the hair fur. and um yeah i mean it, it, some of them are like fluffier some of them are, are fluffier some of them are not as fluffy and i mean that for me is like part of the the, the relaxing of having a pet so unless we can replicate that exactly, I don't think we're we're gonna be we're gonna have a problem with that <laughs> with the furriness. Um, but yeah, I mean, for me, it's sad. It's not so much that I talk to my cats or that they understand that. I mean, I, 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 I yeah. For me, it's like the petting or like the, the grabbing the whiskers or stuff like that. Yeah. Playing with their feet, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Poking their feet. Yeah. So uh, unless they can recreate Playing with that, their ears. I don't think. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think it's it. Something's gonna happen to our pets just yet. I mean, first we're gonna get rid of our friends before we get rid of the pets. That's what I think. Um. <laughs> you know, I think. I don't know, man. I mean, I mean, it's. I think it's. It's. It's just, um, it's, I mean, these things are going to happen. The, the question, it really is, is how do we want them to happen? I mean, what version of that future do we want? Um, and, and to me, it's not really up to us. It's up to all these companies that are controlling it. And um, whether they have the best intention in mind, I don't know. Uh, remember that... Uh, Oh no, it wasn't you. You weren't on that podcast on that episode. I th oh yeah, it was it was Ivan when we talked about the ethics of AI. <laughs> when yeah. we, we talked about you know are we creating, um, you know, are we programming AI in our own image? So basically, are we are we just copying ourselves to AI? <laughs> well, us with our stupidness and our biases and our. Oh, everything, you know, everything that comes with all the messiness about being human. <laughs> Hopefully not. That's that's what we don't want. <laughs> yeah. Let them learn from exactly. zero, be, from be, scratch. Not, I, I remember I said, I said in that episode, I said right at the end, the perfect scenario is one, it's very utopian, but it's basically where they are better than us, not us better than them. And yeah. the moment where they become better than us, we don't want to, you know, eliminate them because they are, you know, now they are, you know, Forcing us to become better, better people. Um, <laughs> I think that's the the better, the better end game. But whether or not that's going to happen, I don't think it's up to us. I mean, it's up to us to de to decide. But right now, I feel as though we're not in control. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Eventually, we will be. I mean, when well, they <laughs> when they start, I think when they when they start making, let's say a robot. We're gonna call them robot. When they start making robots that you can buy as an assistant or chef or whatever. And obviously the companies are gonna have control over them. They're gonna lock certain things that might make them become self-aware or learn things that they shouldn't. But I know there's gonna be somebody out there who's gonna buy one and who's gonna hack it. Yeah. And, and he's gonna let it learn everything it needs to learn. And maybe it's gonna start something um, chaotic or catastrophic or maybe it's gonna start something amazing yeah. that we don't know and and I mean I don't know if I should think like this but I think we should open those floodgates well there's you know Elon Musk Elon Musk yeah um, Y Combinator and a bunch of other people put together created this group called open AI and uh, the last I heard was that more than a handful of people from, you know, both Microsoft, Apple, Amazon, uh, Google, F 
Facebook, the ones that are kind of controlling AI right at this point, or, or it's, you know, you know, the way it's moving, mm -hmm. how fast it's moving, they jumped ship and went over to OpenAI to, to work with this, with this group, which basically what they're trying to do is um, advocate for a more open conversation about this stuff and how it's going to affect us in the future. Um, <laughs> and they're putting their own money to, to uh, operating this thing, so they're still funding it. Uh, what it means is that they're trying to protect us from ourselves. <laughs> that's that's the bottom line. That's what they're trying to do. And um, whether whether that's going to work or not, we don't know. We don't know. I, mean, it, I think it's going to be... Um, are the odds in our favor that the robots will want to kill us? Well, or that's one us? question... The other question is, are we creating AI in our own image? What That's what we don't want that. We don't want to just replicate ourselves. Then what the hell are we doing? It's just like, oh, here's a, a copycat version of me. <laughs> but I mean, at the end of, of the day, the robots, we're parasites. They, the human race are parasites. We destroy everything yeah. we're around. So what if the robots come to that conclusion? That, that we're stupid? That we're just destroying I think, something. I think that would be a, a sign of, of of an AI that thinks for itself. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, have you seen? Kaplan? And I think that's what people, you know, what, what what we fear. Have you seen Captain America? The latest one? Yeah. No, not the latest one. There's a scene where Vision, uh, sides with Tony Stark on the whole, uh, should the government control us or not? But it's more of a control the superheroes. Yeah, it's 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 more of a he goes the rational way because I mean he's not even human, so he goes the rational way in that if we weren't there, there wouldn't be chaos. So I think we should be put under control. And I mean that kind of like reminded me of that of of the thing that. I mean, we have the the reasoning to be like, okay, you know what? No, no, no. We're parasites, but we, I mean, we shouldn't die or something like that. But the robot's not gonna be like that. The AI is not gonna be like that. No. He won't think, oh, they no, they shouldn't die because, because why? I don't give a. He doesn't give a shit if we die or not. He's trying to do the best thing for everyone, and if the best thing for everyone is eliminate us, it's gonna try and do it, and if it's Connected to the inter, I mean, it's Skynet. <laughs> it's Skynet. That's why I, maybe that's why the the movie is so popular, because it's something that it's really, 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 really possible to happen. Yeah. <laughs> and it's gonna like that that robot. I don't know where I wrote. I I read the quote, but that that it said that there's a robot somewhere, that said. To its creators that it's gonna keep them in a in a people's. Have you read that? No. It's online. Look for it. It, it. it tells you where the the where they created the robot and everything, and it's AI and it's learning. You know, there's a there's a book called The Human Zoo. I didn't know that. No. Okay, so uh, a good friend of mine, um, Steve Koss, he recommended I read this book because it it talks about how we live, how basically we humans are animals living in a zoo. So everything like like drugs that we use, everything, all that stuff, is like an animal being put in a zoo, controlled under control situation. So basically, we are animals being controlled, and I, you know, it's a good metaphor for for society because it's the truth. <laughs> yeah, it's the truth. I mean, and it's it's gonna be continue. It's continue to be the truth, and if it, it's 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 just you know. Whether or not we, we, we end up creating a very, very, you know, human-like or more than human-like um, AI, you know, all this conversation is coming to play. Like, like who's going to control who? <laughs> yeah. All who's this gonna stuff. Control who? <laughs> what if it learns to manipulate? Yeah. And we don't, and we don't know it's manipulating. If it has, yeah, if it has, you know, fears and desires and all this stuff, yet at the same time it's smarter than us. 
you know, it's, <laughs> you know, we don't know if it's playing with us, right? Yeah, because because that's one of the the advantages that we have over computers or, or computing at this point is that we can fuck around with people's minds. <laughs> we do it all the time, and we fucking enjoy it. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know what happens when start doing to us? I mean. <laughs> I mean, imagine being and I think, able to... And, being, and, and I think the first step towards that future is this question that we started with, you know, do we really want bir human-like virtual assistants? And you, maybe maybe the people who are listening to this podcast are thinking, man, these guys, I thought these guys were going to start talking about, you know, the efficiencies of having a human-like conversation with a computer and whatnot. But, you know, I think that's the entry entryway, gateway towards this other future. <laughs> because once we once become sensitive... To computing, it's game over. <laughs> it's game over. It's like falling in love. <laughs> yeah. Once you start, once you start eliminating all these biases in a, in a in a potential partner, and by the way, we do it all the time. Persuasion, seduction. <laughs> There's multiple ways to do that to make somebody fall in love with you on command. You know, it's like game over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like game over, and some people enjoy doing that just for the hell of it. Um, it's the same thing here. Once we start becoming in love, we're all in love with the computers. Uh, but the next step is, you know, we start talking to it. They start doing all these things for us. <laughs> and it's not judgmental. <laughs> we are falling in love. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if it learns next thing to... we know, next thing you know, we're going to stop talking about our fucking devices. Like if they're per people. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, my iPhone is better than yours. <laughs> are you talking about your wife or your assistant? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> there's the same one. Oh, <laughs> yeah. But I think that I mean, I think that's the bottom line of this, this conversation. Um, <laughs> Imagine if the president has an assistant or what, an AI assistant. Well, here, here's the other topic that, that we can probably get into, like in in another episode. But is is security and privacy and all this stuff. Um, <laughs> Because it's, it's, remember, Jarvis in Iron Man has access to the web. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and most likely he can learn anything he fucking wants. Yeah. Like, like the Matrix. Even faster than freaking Matrix. Right? So what's stopping one of these things to hack whatever the fuck they want? <laughs> I'm trying to remember if there's a scene in Iron Man or, you know, any of the other movies where Jarvis appears where he's hacking something for Tony Stark. I'm trying to remember. But in the Age of Ultron, Jarvis, before he can become Vision, he hides somewhere in the web. <laughs> mm -hmm. But they'd never explain how this happens. He'd just say, oh no, he, he hid somewhere in the dark web. I'm like, okay, so how the hell does that happen? Like, what the F? <laughs> right? And we all know there's two webs. There's, even right now, there's, the, the web that we all use, and then there's the dark web, which you can only access with like a very specific, um, and actually the browser is called Thor, <laughs> yeah. that you can use to access like the dark web, where all these cyber crime and all this other stuff happens. You know, we can buy freaking grenades and planes and <laughs> off the black market, <laughs> drugs and whatnot, you know, <laughs> like if it was eBay. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people don't know this. <laughs> so I think that's. That's I think we should we should talk about that on the next episode, like the privacy thing, security thing, because that's a whole completely different thing. Yeah. <laughs> like what's gonna happen if it's not happening already? <laughs> yeah, because it, it's it's and in the 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 anime I'm watching, Ergo Proxy, the the assistant to this police chick. Is being monitored by her grandfather because her grandfather is like the founder of everything. So there's a lot of scenes when she doesn't speak to it or she doesn't tell her assistant anything because she knows it's being monitored. And I mean, I think it's it's kind of like okay, so for a normal person, if you're being monitored, it's not that big of a problem. But when you're a little bit like, for example, her that she was she's trying to to um, work a case that she's not supposed to, but she has to do it now by herself. She can't rely on the on, on, on her AI to help her like it's always done. So it's, it's 
that's where it gets a little bit complicated, but it, it's more like, a, okay, you want this thing that's gonna make your life easier, there's a few drawbacks. You might not uh, care for them, depending on your lifestyle, but it, it's a possibility. It's always gonna be a possibility. You have some sort of robot or AI in your house or with yeah. you that's connected to the internet, there's a possibility that it's gonna be hacked or it's, someone's watching you. Yeah, The future of crime. <laughs> crime hacking it to open that's, the door for you yeah that's that's the next episode <laughs> the future of crime i don't i don't even want to get into that it's so depressing <laughs> <laughs> the future of crime seen from the point of view of ai <laughs> um but i think i think that's a good way to end it um anyway so what do you guys think you know <laughs> <laughs> we kind of we kind of look like we digress from this thing but you know f frankly this this episode was not about a life with virtual assistants and their efficiencies yeah. and whatnot it was more like you know this is the entryway towards the future of what right <laughs> what so you know you let us know what you think and um next next week next episode we'll we'll elaborate more on the security side and the privacy side of you know, of all the AI, of the AI stuff going yeah. around. But, uh, you know, talk to you soon, guys. Talk to you on the next week. See ya. <laughs>